Hey everybody, this is Dean and welcome to Photo Blue. Today I'm going to show you how to uh, import photographs in uh, Nikon NX Studio using Nikon Transfer. Uh, Nikon Transfer is a program that it's like a separate program that Nikon created for file transfer and they've used it in uh, other uh, programs uh, like uh, I think NX View was one of them, or and uh, NX Capture, I guess. Uh, so previous versions of, uh, of 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 programs that NX Studio replaced used this uh, program. But in order to get the program, you have to load NX Studio. So there's not a separate way to to load it. Although you can run it separately from NX Studio once it's loaded. Uh, so it's a pretty cool program and has uh, some pretty good features in it. Uh, so I just wanted to show it to you real quick. Now to bring this up, we just go up here to import and click that and it will actually start up NX transfer. Uh, I have a card with a lot of files on it here because I generally use a larger card in my cameras and I keep the photos uh, on it kind of as a super extra backup. I, I transfer them to my computer and then I back them up in a different location. But I keep the card and uh, once the card gets filled up or close to fi filled, I just replace the card with a new card uh, because uh, you want to replace your SD or your memory cards periodically because they do wear out after a while or fail after a while. So if you replace them regularly you, you, you have less of a problem. Alright so anyway I have it started up already here and uh, we're under source and that's the source that it's going to transfer from. Now right here uh, I have a removable card selected. I could actually plug my camera in and the camera will show up here. And uh, when the camera shows up if it's a camera with multiple slots uh, you can click on the camera and it will give you the choice of, of what slot you're looking at and transferring from. Uh, so that's just something to be aware of. Uh, so, so up here, and where it says search for, you can search for cameras and removable disks too. So you can transfer from directly from your camera or from a removable disk. I tend to like to take the disk and just put it in, in, in and remove it from the disk itself. I find it a little bit easier. All right, so uh, we can select the photos that we want to um, um, transfer over. I think by default, when you put the card in or the camera in initially, it selects all the all the photos on on the um, card. But you can see the thumbnails here, and you can select right here. We have uh, if we select this. I can go up here and I can deselect all of them or I can go up here and select them all with this icon uh, or I can click on this icon here and select particular ones that I want to transfer uh, and, and I can go through all of the photos and just select which ones I want to transfer if that's what I want to do. Uh, typically you would probably s select all on the card. Uh, or the newer ones on the card. You can also group them by date shot, extension, uh, folder, none. Uh, date shot is probably the most useful to group them by in the thumbnails to select them with. Uh, and then we can go down here and, and it shows us the transfer queue since I've only selected five uh, photographs. It shows them in there. Uh, now the next thing to go to would be the, the primary destination. Uh, there's a default on here under pictures and icon transfer to that's the default but you could uh, select a custom primary uh, destination folder uh, the nice feature on here is you can actually create a subfolder uh, and uh, by default I guess it starts at 001 and then goes to 002 but you can actually edit this and it gives you all these choices to uh, uh, build the name of the um, uh, subfolder 
like it has sub sequential numbers default, but you can actually uh, go by date transferred or date shot or date and time transferred. So let's go by date shot. Uh, you can also actually uh, put here different subfolders and stuff. Uh, I'm going to put do not add a trailing number. And we're just going to use uh, th the uh, date shot. Uh, and I'm going to go OK. Uh, we can also rename the files during transfer. I like to just leave them the same, but if you did that, you also have another uh, file naming thing here that allows you to put a prefix and a s suffix and uh, e and you can use a sequential number or the date shot. Uh, you can also with the prefix and the suffix in this one you can use uh, the original name for the prefix or the suffix or you can use the original name and a new name in the suffix. So you can go through this and name or rename the file names however you want as well. So you can customize both the subfolder name and how it names and renaming the files if you want to rename them. I'm not going to rename them. I'm going to just leave that the same. Uh, so then we have a backup uh, destination folder as well. So we can back up the files here and uh, and uh, this is great out here the subfolder uh, because it's using the same destination uh, uh, same settings at the primary destination so if we unclick that we could if we wanted different subfolder names for that we could do that so it will name the backup the same or uh, it will name the subfolder the same in the backup folder uh, by default. But once again, you can customize all of this stuff to exactly what you want, which is really uh, a nice feature. Finally, we have preferences on here. And uh, this is a really cool section because you can set these preferences so that you don't have to worry about them and it will, will set um, certain things for you. Uh, at the beginning you can add additional information uh, and here it kind of warns you make sure you have the latest version of NS transfer. Uh, this is the main reason it does this is if you have a newer camera uh, uh, it needs the latest NX transfer so that it knows you know, kind of any particular information that camera might have uh, uh, for the additional information. And So I'm going to just go yes here. Uh, so we can put copyright information and it has a few default things in here uh, or default profiles you can edit these and you can actually create your own presets here for the information so for instance these examples here like if if uh, you shoot weddings or uh, uh, different types of shoots that you do you can create um, information for them like if there's different information for those particular types of shoots that you usually use uh, always apply ratings to original files it's for supported cameras only so the camera you have may or may not support that or you may or may not use that feature I'm gonna uncheck additional information for this uh, particular transfer so the next thing under under preferences is uh, transfer new files only so once you start using the system you could have it so that you check that and each time that you put your card in or you connected your camera it would only transfer the new file so it would keep track of that uh, then we can here's another nice feature on this if you if you transfer directly from your camera you can have it so that it will automatically sync the time so it will sync your computer time to your camera time or, or your camera time to your computer time so uh, e that's a nice feature because if, if, if you used direct transfer from your camera then 
you could always make sure that the camera was syncing up the the time uh, uh, to make sure that it was accurate. Uh, you can uh, click automatically switch over to second slot after transfer. If you have a camera in the source, um, if you have your camera connected up in the source, if you click on the camera and it has more than one slot, like if it has a second card in it, you can uh, you can select which one uh, that you want to transfer from. Now, a lot of people use the second slot as a backup. I use my second slot as a backup. Uh, but if, if, if it was like a contiguous thing where you shot on one and went to the next, it will automatically switch over to the second slot after the first slot is transferred. We can also have um, uh, disconnect automatically after uh, transfer. That's a, a default. You can delete originals after transfer. By default, that's off. Like I said, I I prefer just to leave them on the card. Uh, it's like a super extra backup, which I I may and hopefully probably never need. But it's just the more backup you have, the better off you are. Uh, and then uh, open uh, destination folder with the following uh, application after transfer. So automatically after the transfer, it would open NX Studio. We called up Nikon Transfer from NX Studio, but if you just went in to Nikon Transfer first, then uh, Nikon Transfer after it's done will bring in up NX Studio. So NX Studio can call up Nikon Transfer and Nikon Transfer can call up NX Studio. So you can go in either way. But like I said, you need to load NX Studio to get Nikon Transfer. Uh, and when you load NX Studio, it will automatically load Nikon Transfer. So after we've got all of our settings uh, uh, set up. We've got our preferences set up. We've got our primary and backup destination set up and we've selected our photos. Uh, we're ready to do the transfer and that's the easiest part right here. So we have five photos selected and uh, all we have to do to uh, transfer them at that point is start the transfer. And so it goes through them real quick and it says file transfer is complete Nikon transfer to will be closed. So as soon as we click this, it will close the program. We're already in NX Studio. If NX Studio wasn't opened, it would open it once we close this as well. So that's how you use uh, Nikon transfer uh, in NX Studio. I'm Dean and this has been Photo Blue and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like.